Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Wednesday of Holy Week, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 14 through 25. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now, let us listen and attend to our gospel passage proclaimed by Michael Toole. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered, and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord? He said in reply, he who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi? He answered, You have said so. The stage is being set for the final drama of Jesus' mission. Judas has gone to the chief priests to make a deal for handing Jesus over to them. This term, handing over, is like a refrain all through the gospel and reaches a climax here. John the Baptist was handed over. Now we see Jesus being handed over. The term occurs three times in today's passage. Later, the followers of Jesus will also be handed over into the hands of those who want to put an end to their mission. Judas sells his master by handing him over for 30 pieces of silver. Only Matthew mentions the actual sum given to Judas. The sum derives from a passage in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 11, verses 11 through 13, where it is the wages paid to the shepherd, Zechariah himself, rejected by the people. He is then told by God to throw the money into the temple treasury as a sign of God's rejecting those who reject him. Judas, too, will throw back the money to the priests after realizing what he has done. What people will do for money. And Judas is not alone. What he did is happening every day, today. Perhaps I too have betrayed and handed over Jesus more than once. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus' disciples ask him where he wants to celebrate the Passover. 
Little do they know the significance of this Passover for Jesus and for them. The Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover are closely linked, but there is a distinction between them. The Passover was the commemoration of the Israelites being liberated from their slavery in Egypt. Their escape through the Red Sea and the beginning of their long trek to the promised land. The feast began at sunset after the Passover lamb had been sacrificed in the temple on the afternoon of the 14th day of the month Nisan. Associated with this on the same evening was the eating of unleavened bread, the bread that Jesus would use when he said over it, this is my body. The eating of this bread continued for a whole week to Nisan 21 as a reminder of the sufferings of the Israelites and what they underwent and the hastiness of their departure. It was a celebration of thanks to God for the past and for the hope of a great future. Jesus tells the disciples they are to contact a man who will provide all that they need for a Passover meal. During the meal, Jesus drops the bombshell. One of you is about to betray. All of this has been foretold in the scriptures, but how sad it is for the person who has to take this role, even though it is a role he has deliberately chosen. There is a certain cynicism when Judas asks with an air of injured innocence, not I, Rabbi, surely. And Jesus says to him in brief reply, you have said so. The whole approaching drama is now set in motion. Let us watch it carefully during the coming three days, not just as spectators, but as participants. Let time itself collapse so that we become present at all three celebrations. For we too have so often betrayed Jesus. We too have so often broken bread with Jesus and perhaps have sold him for money out of ambition, out of greed, out of anger, hatred, revenge, or even violence for our own personal gain. We can, like Judas, either abandon him in despair or, like Peter, come back to him with tears of repentance. After our closing prayer, reread the scripture passage and contemplate the message it has for you. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, maybe from a verse or even just a word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him. And let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with the firm conviction that by contemplating, embracing, and living your holy word, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you always, and may his blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>